we're going to find the moment of inertia of a stick about the very end. Um, if you happen to be in my class, this is on page 270 in our, in our notes. Um, so again, we want to find the moment of inertia of this thing or how resistant it is to being rotated around this, this axis. So um, what's helpful is if you remember that um, for discrete objects, um, the way that you get the moment of inertia is you take each chunk of mass um, times its distance squared. So you take each little bit of mass m sub i, like m1, m2, m3, and you multiply it by the, its distance away from the axis squared. Okay, so this is for um, discrete masses, like a bunch of separate um, point masses. Um, now this thing is not a bunch of discrete masses. This is a continuous like uh, distribution of mass, right? The mass is all smeared out, okay? So what will happen is instead of a sum of a finite number of masses, you have an infinite sum of infinitesimal masses. And so what happens is this sum becomes an infinite sum, okay? And individual discrete masses become infinitesimal masses um, that we're going to call dm, okay? So what you need to do is take this little mass and then multiply by its distance squared, and that would be the moment of inertia just from this little piece, and then you have to add them all up, okay? So what ends up happening then is so each little chunk of mass dm you multiply it by r squared. So what, what this combination would mean without the integral sign is that would be the moment of inertia of just this little bitty chunk going around that axis, okay? And then um, what we need to do is add them all up. Um, and so that's what adding them all up is this uh, integration um, that we're gonna do. So the hardest part of this is always kind of coming up with an expression for how much does this little chunk weigh? Right, or what is its mass, okay? And you can think of it as a unit conversion, okay? So what I'm about to write, I would say, tends to be the key for this whole thing, okay? So it's, it's gonna be um, like mass per length times a length. So to find the, how, how much mass is in this little piece, we need to know its mass per length, and then we need to know how long it is. Well, the mass per length of this thing, we're kind of given it because the, the whole stick is mass capital M and the whole stick is length L. So the mass per length is just M over L. But then the length of this thing, this itty bitty distance here, that itty bitty distance, we're gonna call dx. It's a tiny little excursion in length. So it's gonna be mass per length times length or M over L dx. So the meaning of this combination here, M over L dx, that is how much one little chunk weighs, okay? And, uh, and so what you would do is stick that in for dm, okay? And then r, if you remember, is the distance from the axis to the point that you care about, okay? So this, this distance would be x or r, okay? Um, let's say or r. And so what's gonna happen is really this r we can write as, an, as x, it's just the distance away from the axis. So let's substitute for both of these things. The um, r squared is actually x squared, right? x representing how far away you are. And then dm, let's plug in our expression for dm, m over l dx. And what we have to do is start at the left end of the stick at zero and let x run all the way out to L. Okay, so that's kind of the setup for it. I would say the hardest part of this thing is coming up with this little expression for like, what is the mass of this little piece? Um, and then once you have that, you can stick that in there. Okay, um, so now we're here. Um, M over L is a constant. Let's just pull it out, M over L. Those are just constants. So really all we're doing is integrating from zero to L of x squared dx. Um, so that's going to be m over l. We need the function for which if you take its derivative, you get x squared. So that will be like x cubed over 3 would be the antiderivative of that thing. Um, definite integral. We don't really have to mess with the constant or it would go away anyway. Um, we have to evaluate it at 0 and l. So finally, I guess last line of algebra, you get m over l 
times L cubed over 3 uh, minus 0 cubed over 3. Um, so finally, you get one-third ml squared. Now, my advice to you as you continue working in physics and, and calculating moments of inertia is always note that your result for a moment of inertia is going to be some kind of a mass times a distance squared. So if you are grinding through a big calculation and you end up with, you know, uh, mass times distance to the fourth or something, you screwed up. So just something to watch out for. Um, so what this is is the moment of inertia about the uh, of a stick of mass m, uniform stick of mass m uh, uh, about the end. Um.